My name is Stefan Anker, and here at the European Society Cardiology 2021 meeting, we have the chance to present the Emperor Preserved Primary Outcome Results, and it's a real pleasure to announce to you that this is a very successful trial. Now, what did we do in this trial? Emperor Preserved is about testing empagliflozin at a 10 milligram once daily dose compared to placebo in 6,000 patients with heart failure and a preserved ejection fraction. You may remember that a year and two years ago, first trials reported on the use of SGLT2 inhibitors in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction with an ejection fraction of 40% or less. And now we are talking about the patients with an ejection fraction above 40%. These patients are symptomatic. These patients have structural heart disease or a heart failure hospitalization in the last 12 months. And these patients have diabetes in half of the cases, but in the other half, they didn't have diabetes. Now, when we did this study and we set it out about four and a half years ago, we were planning for a follow-up of about two years. In the end, the follow-up is now 26 months. The primary endpoint is the composite of cardiovascular mortality and heart failure hospitalization. And the two key secondary endpoints are on the one hand, first and recurrent heart failure hospitalizations, and on the other hand, the change in the GFR slope. Now, focusing on the primary outcome results, I'm really happy to tell you that we were able to show in this trial a 21% reduction of this primary endpoint, and the p-value for this is 0 0.0003. This represents the first clear positive result ever achieved in a heart failure with preserved ejection fraction trial. You may know that there were about five different trials beforehand, none of them achieving a clear positive result. They had modest benefits, but overall this is now uh, a breakthrough for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, there will be no doubt this is a, a study that hopefully makes a difference to medicine in the future. Now, when we are talking about the components of such a primary endpoint, the results were primarily driven for this composite endpoint in heart failure hospitalizations. So in total, we have more than 25% reduction in recurrent heart failure hospitalization, again, a highly significant result, p-value less than 0 0.001. When you consider cardiovascular mortality, the other component, there was a 9% reduction nominally, not significant in itself. And then going to the second uh, secondary endpoint, the GFR slope change, yes, this was achieved to be significant, uh, but unfortunately, in HFPEF, as you will see also later on, it didn't translate into significant kidney benefits uh, for these patients. Now, uh, what do we achieve with regards to quality of life and symptoms? There are also benefits seen in this trial. And so all around, there are good news because in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, we now have the first time evidence there is a big and clinically meaningful benefit. And from here on, we can say we have some evidence-based medicine, I think, for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And with this, I thank you for your attention and talk to you soon. Uh, I'm Milton Packer. I am delighted to be with you today to talk about the results of Emperor Pooled. Now, Emperor Pooled is a pooled analysis of two trials that were extraordinarily similar to each other, the Emperor Reduced trial and the Emperor Preserved trial. Now, these are two sister trials, uh, very similar uh, groups of investigators, endpoints, statistical plan. Uh, they were separated by an ejection fraction of 40%, 40% or less in Emperor Reduced and greater than 40% in Emperor Preserved. Now, you've already heard the results from Emperor Preserved from Stefan Anker. I want to talk to you about the, what we're seeing across both trials put together.
first point, uh, the results of emperor reduced and emperor preserved are so similar to each other with respect to the primary endpoint of cardiovascular death or hospitalization of heart failure, really similar to each other with respect to the uh, total hospitalizations for heart failure and for cardiovascular death. So uh, these two uh, trials really suggest that ejection fraction doesn't matter very much, uh, when, at least when you look at the top line results. However, uh, when we get a little bit more granular and we look at only at hospitalizations for heart failure, which is the primary benefit of empagliflozin, we see that ejection fraction does influence the magnitude of benefit of empagliflozin on heart failure hospitalizations. Uh, we see uh, a very consistent effect on heart failure hospitalizations at 30% reduction in risk from a very low ejection fractions, less than 25%, up to an ejection fraction less than 65%. But at 65%, the effect becomes attenuated. And this is so interesting because other trials have seen this same attenuation, uh, attenuation at ejection fractions at 60, 65%. But when we look at the results of Emperor Preserve side by side with the other trials, for example, the Paragon trial with Sucubitril Valsartan, we see the effect size with empagliflozin is larger than with sucubitril valsartan when we match for endpoints and for ejection fraction subgroups. Second important point, uh, when we look at renal events, renal outcomes, uh, we see a striking reduction in major renal outcomes with empagliflozin in the emperor reduced trial, no effect in the emperor preserved trial. And we thought, gee, this is really interesting uh, and, and unexpected. Uh, we investigated this further and we uh, looked at alternative definitions for renal outcomes. And we used a more conventional definition of renal outcomes. And we saw that empagliflozin actually influenced renal outcomes using a conventional definition, but there was an influence of ejection fraction. Again, an influence of ejection fraction on renal outcomes that paralleled the influence of ejection fraction on heart failure outcomes. Again, uh, we're seeing an attenuation of effect in patients with ejection fractions of 60 to 65% or greater. Now, this group of patients with HEFPEF with ejection fractions of 60, 65% or greater is a really interesting group. We really have to study them more. We have to understand them uh, much more than we do. But uh, the really, really, I think, exciting news is we're seeing very consistent effects with empagliflozin, 30% reduction in heart failure hospitalizations, all the way through a broad spectrum of patients with heart failure up to an ejection fraction of 65%. This has really meaningful effects for the treatment of this disease and for patients who have it. Uh, we're really excited about these results. Uh, we are really excited about them being translated into clinical practice.